Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Catherine, and in this video, we are gonna be talking about IDEs, or Integrated Development Environments. Essentially, an IDE is a piece of software that helps you write code. And so if you think of, you know, Photoshop makes editing photos a lot easier, iMovie makes editing movies a lot easier, an IDE is gonna make developing applications and developing programs a lot easier. In short, an IDE is an integrated development environment. It's a piece of software that acts as a text editor, debugger, and compiler all in one. If you don't know what that means, don't worry. We'll break down each of these terms, but basically an IDE is a tool that makes writing your code easier. Starting with the text editor, a text editor is an editor where you can edit text. And so a common one here on a Mac is text edit. We'll go ahead and create one on my desktop. And in here, I can just write whatever text I want here. And I'm writing a bunch of text. Now, I can save it to a file here. If I want to save it, you know, put it on my desktop. I'll call it hello. There it is, it's saved on my desktop. But inside of that text editor, there's no way to compile our code or debug it. And so from this text file, I can't compile or debug anything. So it's basically good for writing text. Another popular text editor is Sublime, which I have open here in the middle. And essentially, Sublime is another text editor where you can edit text. It's a pretty popular one that people like to use for front-end code or HTML or CSS. Again, although this is a pretty sophisticated text editor, you still can't compile code. But let's write some quick HTML so you can see how it's used. So if I go body and I make a header and say welcome to this page, and so h1 is header1, so it's gonna make a big header for us on the page. Body is just a keyword for HTML saying this is where I want the content of my page. But here we have some HTML we can go ahead and save this from within the Sublime Text text editor. And we'll save it in our desktop. We're gonna call it index.html because that's a common like homepage name in your code for HTML. And there is our text file. Now we can't compile it, but luckily we don't need to compile it. We can just go ahead and drag it into our Google, you know, I use Google Chrome. Here is our Google Chrome page. We can go ahead, we just dragged this into there. If I go ahead and go back to Google, whoops, and there it goes, and I drag this into here, it does in fact load that page, does not use a compiler, is simply reading this markup, and that's how it's displaying what it is on the page. The link for this program that we edited the text in, Sublime Text, that link is down below, as well as some other softwares that we're gonna talk about in this video. Another option for your text editor is Atom, and that's another popular one, and it allows for more customization. So now you know about text editors. An IDE, or an integrated development environment, has this, is you know, you're able to write the code in the text editor, but it also has a debugger and a compiler. You can have an IDE for a specific language or one that works for multiple languages. So let's go ahead and open one up so you can kind of see what I mean. And so one I use a lot is called IntelliJ, and this is one specifically for Java. This was created specifically by JetBrains, the company, and they create a bunch of different language-specific IDEs. And like all Java IDEs, you're going to need the Java JDK in order to use it. The Java JDK is the Java Development Kit, and basically that just allows you to run and develop Java programs. So let's go ahead and create a new project with this Java IDE. And notice you have to have that project SDK, or for Java it's the JDK, and that would be saved somewhere in your computer. I'll leave, I'll put the link down below if you like love Java and wanna use Java. You're gonna need that JDK, which allows you to develop those programs. And you basically link it into your IDE so it's able to compile and run your programs. And also you get all the software tools, which is like what you need. So I'm just gonna call this Hello World. 
and there it is. And now we are in an official IDE. We'll be able to mess with all the different things. You'll see the text editor, we'll use the debugger, and we'll also use the compiler. So on the left here, we have this navigation panel. And essentially, this is where you're going to navigate to all of your different code files. And your code files are going to live mainly in this SRC folder or your source code folder. These other you know, things are just uh, metadata about the IDE itself and so how you have it configured and all that good stuff. We don't really care about that. We'll only care about our source code. And so we can go ahead and create a new file. I just did control click and we can go new Java class. You can also go up here, go new Java class. And in this case, we are gonna name our class hello. So we'll just you know create a quick class because you have to create a class for pretty much everything in Java in order to run stuff. Um, and we'll go ahead and create that class and we'll call that public static void method. If you haven't done Java before, don't worry about all of this. It's more just um, a quick, um, uh, what's it called, boilerplate stuff we have to do in order to get a program to run. So like you have to have this code in order to get your most basic thing run. Um, but don't worry about the specifics for now. Um, worry about the IDE, the fact I was able to edit this code in the program. I was able to create this file, edit the code in this program, this is our text editor portion. Um, and so I'm gonna write a quick Java statement here. We're just gonna say hi there. And we have our string hello, hi. And we'll go ahead and run this. Um, so don't worry again about the Java stuff. This is just an IDE. I'm showing you some basic code that we put into the IDE. But notice I can run this code. I just control clicked on my file here. Um, or left clicked on this on this um, hello Java class, this hello Java file, and we can run this. This was not an option in our sublime text thing. For our sublime text thing, we are gonna have to run the code a different way, but inside of this software program, inside of this IDE, we're able to run it. We don't have to access the terminal, which I'll show you in a second. We can just run it right here. And you'll notice a console window is gonna pop up at the bottom here that basically shows our high output. But all of this is happening within our IDE. We're able to write our code, run it, and see it in the console. When we're running it, that's the compiler working. We didn't have to compile our code and then run it. The IDE automatically does it for us because that JDK is linked. So where does debugging come into play? Well, to debug this class within this IDE, I'm gonna add a breakpoint here, and that will stop the program's execution at that line. So let's say I'm just gonna create a variable that's gonna hold this string, and then put it here, and then we'll add a breakpoint there. Um, and basically by adding this breakpoint, I can run it in debug mode, and it will stop at that line and not execute it until I tell the program to continue. So I'm going to go ahead and click the critter up here on the right. And it'll run the program and then it'll stop at line 5. And you can check the values of specific variables within your program and then check that they're right and then continue the program's execution. And so right now it is running. And here it stops at line 5. Here we have S, it's gonna have the value of high. We get a bunch of information about S, our variable here that we created on line four. And then using these tools here, I can continue through the program. Again, this isn't possible, this debugging, this, these breakpoints, they're not possible in Sublime Text or a text editor. There are another tool that's added to our IDE, our IntelliJ here. And so if we go ahead and continue the program by pressing this button here, over here. We'll go ahead and continue it. Looking in the console, we see in fact that high was printed. So now you know about debugging, but compiling, like I was saying earlier, every time we press this play button, the program is compiled for us. All we had to do was press the play button and it compiled our code and it ran our code just within the program. It handles everything for us. But with just a text editor, we would need to compile the program first, creating that Java class, and then go ahead and run that Java class. So we'll go ahead and copy this code and put it into Sublime. 
paste this stuff here and then save it in a file called hello.java. We'll put that on our desktop and we'll need to compile first and then run it. And so in this case, I'm gonna go to my desktop inside of here. We'll go java c hello.java. This will create the Java class file, which we see here in our desktop. And then we'll wanna run that Java um, class file by going java hello. And that's where we get that high printout inside of our terminal. But you know, in our IDE, all we had to do was press play. We didn't have to worry about these two commands and creating the different files. It handled it all for us. We didn't need to deal with this level. Now, running these terminal commands can definitely get annoying after a while. And the IDE that we had before here, this was super nice because it has all of these tools like the debugger and the compiler and it has the text editor built in and it helps you really write your code more efficiently. That's why this is great. Like I said before, there are IDEs for specific programming languages and others that you'll use for multiple languages. It's really up to you which ones you use. It's all preference. For specific language IDEs, I suggest looking at JetBrains website because they have many IDEs that are pretty intuitive. Eclipse is another popular IDE for languages like C, C++, Python, Java, Ruby, and more. NetBeans is yet another that works for Java, JavaScript, PHP, Python, and more. Monodevelop and Visual Studio are great for C Sharp and .NET projects, as well as projects that involve Unity. And Xcode is your main option for iOS development in Objective-C or Swift. In learning computer science, you're going to hear a lot of seemingly technical, complicated terms, like IDE. On this channel, I try to make tutorials that show you what these terms mean, and so if you don't want to miss one, be sure to subscribe. That's it for this video, and I hope you learned something new. Thanks for watching! You'll never be my home